Okay, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu, my dear sisters and brothers from around the world. Uh, welcome to our last tafsir class on Surah Yasin. Uh, as you know, my name is Tasneem, aka Ukhti from the Tree Arabic Academy. So, inshallah, today we're going to have an amazing lesson on Surah Yasin. And um, if you can just, if you can hear me, then just go ahead and type yes in the comment box below. So, inshallah, we can go ahead and start. So, as always, I'd love to welcome you, O seekers of knowledge. Tulab al you know, the Talib al has such a great status in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you are here today to seek knowledge, subhanAllah. You're in the comfort in your house, comfort of your houses, uh, alhamdulillah. But we are here to dedicate some time to seek the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seek the knowledge of the Qur'an. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this heavy on your scale of deeds on the Day of Judgment, Ya Rabbul Alameen. As we all know that there is a hadith that um, that seeking knowledge is obligatory upon every Muslim. And there is another hadith that the Prophet Sallallahu said that uh, even the angels, they put their wings uh, in front of the person who goes out to seek knowledge. So SubhanAllah, you know, let's just feel the presence of the angels with us right now. Um, as they sit and they listen to us remembering the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So inshallah, uh, let us purify our intentions as well so that we can make the most of this class. So in today's content, we will be going through the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, especially the animals that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created, the benefits for us in that. We're going to be talking about the mindset of a Muslim the origin of a human being. We're going to be talking about kun fayakun. Yes, this is a, a statement that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is specific to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And inshallah, we will end with the dua and I have another special, um, a, a few updates and a few special announcements at the end of the course, at the end of this lesson, meaning. And uh, so inshallah, of course, make sure to register for the free five-day Arabic course. There's only... How many days? There's only one day left. So Sunday, we're not going to have class, but on Monday, I will see you back here again. Um, and inshallah, it will be amazing. We're going to start at eight o'clock. So half an hour before this time. Okay. So now it's 8.30, but for the five day Arabic course, we're going to start at eight o'clock inshallah. So eight o'clock to nine o'clock. And, um, you know, of course the link is always going to be in the description. You can find it. If you don't know where to find it, then just go ahead and email me or DM me. Uh, but yes, inshallah, please, please, please do share it. Alhamdulillah, we have um, so many people signed up. And uh, inshallah, you know, I would love even more people to sign up because I don't know when I'm going to do another five-day Arabic course like this, you know. And uh, subhanallah, who knows? And no one knows what's going to happen, my dear brothers and sisters, you know. So inshallah, go ahead. Um, and share this with everybody and go ahead and commit to yourself that inshallah you will also come to this five-day Arabic course because subhanAllah the world is changing so fast Allah you know people are going away so fast as well and you know we don't know when our time is going to come so we're gonna the only thing that we're going to regret at the end is the time that we didn't spend in the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? The time that we didn't spend and the opportunities that we missed, you know, because uh, of our weaknesses. So inshallah, please make a, uh, make a committed, um, make a dedicated commitment to uh, coming to the five-day Arabic course, inshallah, or at least listening to the recordings every single day. Uh, and of course, if you attend all five days, and you do the homework, then you get a chance to win this amazing Qur'an. So, subhanAllah, the Qur'an is so beautiful. It is the Maqdis Qur'an, and it has the word-by-word -word translation on it. So, I'm going to be giving away five of these Qur'ans. Uh, so, inshallah, that should be even more of an incentive for you to come and do this free, completely free, five-day Arabic course that will, inshallah, change your life. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with the verses. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. 
أولم يروا أن خلقنا لهم مما عملت أيدينا أنعاما فهم لها مالكون Okay, so this is the last uh, sort of page of uh, Surah Yasin. So what is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying here? Do they not see that we created for them uh, from what our hands have made uh, grazing livestock? Oh, so livestock and animals and that they are the owners. So subhanAllah, you know, there are different types of animals, right? There are wild animals and then there are insects and then there are sea animals and so many different types of animals. But subhanAllah, what is the most beneficial animal for us, my dear, <laughs> my dear people? What is the most beneficial animals for us? The animals that we, what? The animals that we fill in the blank livestock you know the animals that we eat yes the animals that we eat you know and the animals that we can domesticate um those are the ones that are mo the most beneficial to us in terms of giving us the comfort of life right so subhanallah imagine i mean let's go to the next verse and then we'll just talk about this but and we have tamed them for them. We have tamed the animals for the human beings. So some of them they ride and some of them they eat. Okay. And for them are benefits, other benefits and drinks. So we get drinks. What's the drink that we get from uh, cattle and animals? What's the main drink that we get? What do we drink their blood? <laughs> We're not vampires. Yes, the main drink or the drink that we get from these animals, which is so beneficial, is milk. Subhanallah. Laban. Laban, halib. Same thing. Um, subhanallah. And milk is such an amazing food product. Uh, it is so beneficial. And we're going to be talking about that. But before we go into that, subhanallah, listen to this. We have tamed them for you. So if you really think about it, some of these animals, they are sometimes bigger and stronger uh, than the human being. Like, for example, camels, right? We have camels, cows, sheep, goats, you know, goats. Oh, my God. Goats are crazy, man. <laughs> goats, they can kick you and they can bite you and, oh, you know, and chickens. Oh, chickens are deadly as well. <laughs> no, chickens, they're very small, but, you know. They have sharp beaks. That's all I can say. Okay. But subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has subdued these animals for us so that we can benefit from it. SubhanAllah. Imagine like if there wasn't, if you had like, imagine if you couldn't tame these animals. Yeah. Like what would you do? Uh, how would we be able to, you know, slaughter them? How would we be able to eat them? And how would we be able to ride them? Etc. Etc. So subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has tamed these animals for us. So it is our responsibility to treat them with mercy as well. And when we slaughter the animals, we should do it in the most best way possible. And we should treat the animals with kindness and, uh, you know, give them uh, a good life uh, before we, you know, do what we need to do. So yes, subhanAllah, it's all a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there are benefits in drinks, so will they not be grateful? So subhanAllah, you know, there are even, I was thinking about like the other animals in the world. Why did Allah Ta'ala create like, you know, lions and giraffes and I don't know, other types of animals like whales and sharks and so like all different types of animals, right? And even like cats and dogs and stuff like that. SubhanAllah. Who has a pet here? Anyone has a pet? A cat or a fish or a dog or a uh, rabbit or something like that? Yes, a lot of cat lovers here, mashallah. So, you know, you can just see, I mean, I'm not personally a cat owner. We have cats in our backyard, but, you know, we just give them food and stuff. I don't really have a connection with the cat. But, I mean, when I see my friends, especially, they have their domesticated cats with them. They are like, they're so happy and they're, like they treat the cat, the cats like their children and it just gives them so much joy, you know? So subhanAllah, it's just, you know, imagine if we couldn't tame these animals and if we couldn't um, have them as our companions and stuff as well. 
So it's also a, a, a wisdom and it's also a sort of, it teaches us compassion and kindness, you know, someone who has a pet, they, they need to really take care of the pet, you know, it, it teaches them compassion and kindness and mercy, subhanAllah. So that is the wisdom behind that, you know, uh, in my opinion. So let's talk about milk. Ooh, milk. So who likes drinking milk? There's a lot of controversy around milk these days, but subhanAllah, there is a hadith about the Prophet Sallallahu who said, Verily, Allah Almighty did not place an ailment, but that he also placed its cure. You should drink the milk of cows, for they are given health by all kinds of plants. So this is a ha sahih hadith. So meaning that there is a lot of benefit in drinking milk. Okay. Now, of course, if you have like, you know, health problems, you're lactose intolerant, like me, <laughs> then, you know, um, you know, you should stay away from drinking milk. But subhanAllah, uh, it is just, it's, it's, a, it's a recommendation by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's not fard, obviously, to drink milk, but it's a beautiful thing. And it has a lot of benefits, subhanAllah. Another hadith that I found is, it's just a sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, um, Ibn Abbas anhuma, reported the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, uh, uh, drank some milk and then rinsed his mouth. So, whenever you drink some milk, you should rinse your mouth because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, it contains fatty grease. So, Atimidi said, some of the scholars held the opinion that the mouth should be rinsed after drinking milk and according to us, it is recommended. Some of them held the opinion that one does not need to rinse the mouth after drinking milk. So, you know, I mean, these are just these sunnas, everyday sunnas, you know, when you drink milk, there's that, you know, lactose and the, that t aftertaste in your mouth. So if you drink some water after that, or you rinse your mouth, then subhanAllah, it's sunnah, you know, the Prophet Sallallahu he himself did it. So, you know, just think about that when you do it. It's like washing your hands. You're going to wash your hands anyway, but I mean, do it for the sunnah, right? So subhanAllah. Al Farhan is like, do milkshakes count? Well, you see, milkshakes are basically flavored milk, right? So why not? Subhanallah. If you have the sunnah, you know, the intention of the sunnah, then subhanallah, why not, my dear sister? <laughs> okay. So yes, everybody. So this is an interesting new sunnah. Did anybody know this? This is an interesting new sunnah that you can practice today. Okay. Verse 74 and 75. But they have taken Allah, besides Allah, false deities that perhaps they would be helped. So, uh, you know, these idolaters, they're asking for help, but they will not be helped. They are not able to help them and they are for them soldiers in attendance. So what's going to happen on the Day of Judgment? These people, they are going to... These people, they are going, the idolaters, right? The ones who used to worship statues and the ones who, who used to worship other things other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're going to go to these things and they're going to ask them for help, but they will not be helped. In this dunya, they didn't help them. Why would they help them in the akhirah? You know, they're just stones. They're just statues. They're just human beings, you know? And in actual fact, you know, these idols, whether it's a human being or whether it's a statue or whether it's money or fame or whatever people have, uh, they were worshipping other than Allah, they will actually be brought on the DOJ, DOJ, DOJ <laughs> the Day of Judgment, as soldiers to witness against them in their shirk. So, you know, these statues and stuff they're gonna they're gonna come with the day of judgment and say we did not tell them to worship us they worship us from themselves and they didn't worship you so imagine they were so devoted to these idols in the dunya but they will become their enemies in the hereafter subhanallah and even shaitan will witness against you on the day of judgment as well he'll say ah i just whispered to them and and i didn't tell them to do anything they they just followed whatever they wanted from their own mind you know i had nothing to do with it Obviously, he had something to do with it, but, you know, people who worship shaitan, shaitan is not going to come and help them on the Day of Judgment either. May Allah Ta'ala protect us, Ya Rabbul Alameen. Okay, so, this is the, that's the state of the idolaters, you know, and you see the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself, he is continuously 
Um, he is continuously what, giving da'wah to these idolaters, to the disbelievers, to tell them that these idols have nothing. They are, they are doing nothing. They can't help you and they can't um, save you from anything. And then the idolaters, they're saying, no, you're wrong and we don't believe you, etc., etc. So obviously the Prophet Sallallahu you know, he knows that this is the truth and imagine how disturbed and how grievous and sad and, you know, by the, by this rejection, you know, and he's not a sad because he's being rejected. He's, he's sad because the word of Allah is being rejected. So what is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly saying to him? He's saying, فَلَا يَحْزُنْكَ قَوْلُهُمْ So let not their speech grieve you. Indeed, we know. We indeed we know what they conceal and what they declare. So, Subhanallah, this is Allah Subhanahu wa Taala directly talking to the Prophet وسلم, consoling him to not grieve over their speech and their false claims. And you see, my dear students, this is the mindset of a believer. We do not let the speech of the disbelievers and their false claims get us down. They can be racist and have Islamophobia and you know do things to bring us down but it can but it should only increase us in our belief and our patience and our efforts inshallah so subhanallah and in the end the result is up to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know we have you know it's not up to us everything is up to allah we just do our best in this dunya and leave it up to allah right subhanallah Verse 77, subhanAllah. Listen to this, everybody. The origin of man. Does not man consider, doesn't man think about the fact that we created him from a mere sperm drop? Then at once he is a clear adversary. So listen, the human being, he was created from this fluid, you know, this dirty fluid. Um, which was placed in the room, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and then became a human being. But if he thinks about his origin, how can he have the audacity to be proud and haughty and say lies about Allah and say that you know, nah, I did everything and I am, you know, to even call himself God, you know, Naudu Billahi, you know, Subhanallah. So if you think about your origin, then you will never ever have pride because subhanallah how you know <laughs> how many um like we just need to look at our origin you know to just be humbled right that we're going to be we came from a lifeless fluid and we're going to go back to being a lifeless dust in the soil once again but you know let's go through you know subhanallah of course, this is one of the miracles of the Qur'an. Uh, the fact that the Qur'an has mentioned that um, the stages of the, of the creation of the human baby, the embryical development in the Qur'an. This is one of the miracles of the Qur'an, subhanAllah, and inshallah we're going to be talking about the miracles of the Qur'an in the first day of the Qur'anic Arabic course, subhanAllah. So inshallah, please do come to day one. It's going to be amazing. So you know, uh, it's just amazing that the Qur'an uh, knew about or like informed us about uh, this uh, development 1400 years ago before we even had these HD uh, ultrasounds, you know, color HD ultrasounds, subhanAllah. You know, now they have colored ultrasounds. Isn't that amazing? But yeah, subhanAllah. Um, all we need to do is look at this. Look at these. We were just this tiny little red thing. We don't know what it is. What does it even look like? We were just like this lump of flesh just a few years back, you know, and then we were in the womb of the mother. Subhanallah. And then what are we, what's going to happen? We're going to go back to being into nothing, right? So this is a hadith. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ spat in his palm. Okay, so he spat in his palm. Like, put some spit in his palm and then he pointed to it with his index finger and said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Do you think you can escape from my punishment, O son of Adam, when I have created you from something like this? When your soul reaches here, and the Prophet pointed to his throat, you say, I give charity, but it is too late for charity. 
So subhanallah, it's like, um, you know, it's, it's just saying that, you know, you have been created from such a, uh, you know, small thing. And how can you say that, oh, this is mine. I don't need to give charity. It's my money, you know. So, you know, this is just an, a reminder for us to give charity, of course. And to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? Now, what's happening here? So, وَضَرَبَ لَنَا مَثَلًا وَنَسِيَ خَلْقًا قَالَ مَنْ يُحْيِ الْعِظَامَ وَهِيَ رَمِيمٌ And he presents for us an example and he forgets his own creation. He says, who will give life to bones while they are disintegrated? So, uh, Ubay bin Khalaf, may Allah curse him, he was one of the enemies of Islam. He came to the Prophet ﷺ and he had like this burn in his hand. Okay? And he just uh, crushed the burn in front of the Prophet ﷺ and he said, do you really think like, how is it that Allah, or do you really think Allah will um, give us life after death, even though we are crushed into dust? So then this verse was revealed, or more or less, that's the hadith. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, look at your own creation. I created you from nothing. So I can recreate you from the bones, okay? That is nothing for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so there is another hadith that I'd like to share with you that um, this is actually a very interesting story that I want you to listen to. So what happened is that Uqba said to Hudhaifa, won't you narrate to us what you heard from the Prophet So Hudhaifa radiallahu anhu, he's a sahabi, so he said, I heard him saying, death approached a man. And when I, he had no hope of surviving, he said to his family, when I die, gather for me, gather for me much wood and build a fire to burn me. When the fire has eaten my flesh and reached my bones, take the bones and grind them <laughs> and scatter the resulting powder in to the sea on a hot, windy day. Okay. So basically he wanted to be cremated. Okay. That was done. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala collected his particles and asked him, why did you do so? He replied, for fear of you. So Allah forgave him. Wow. Subhanallah. So, Basically, the point of the hadith is saying that even if someone is made into dust and the, and the dust particles are put in the ocean, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring back those dust particles, make them into flesh, make them into bones again, and, and resurrect you once again. So, of course, that is the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this person, he did this out of fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so Allah forgave him. That doesn't mean that we do this, of course, but this is just like a hadith, right? This is just a story of the former peoples. <laughs> Say he will give life to he will give them life who produced them first time. And he is the all he is of all creation knowing. So the one who created you the first time, he can recreate you. So the disbelievers, they actually had a hard time in believing in life after death. That, is, that was their issue with this whole thing uh, because they never believed in life after death. They just thought that, oh, this is our life and that's it. We're going to do when we have to enjoy as much as we can and party as much as we can. And that's why they didn't have any morals. They didn't have any ethics. Uh, you know, they were, you know, one of the worst people in Jahiliya, right? But subhanAllah, when you believe in life after death, you believe that, oh, we're going to be recompensed for our actions. And so that is why believing in life after death is actually such, uh, it's, it's just um, something that makes you a better person. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will resurrect the dead and they will spring up like vegetation. So uh, in this hadith, um, Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu said, Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, between the two sounds of the trumpet, there will be 40. Someone asked Abu Huraira 40 days, but he refused to reply. Then he asked 40 months, he refused to reply. He asked 40 years, he refused to reply. Abu Huraira radi uh, radiallahu anhu added, okay, so this is the part of the hadith, then after this period, Allah will send water from the sky and then the dead bodies will grow like vegetation grows. There is nothing of the human body that does not decay except one bone, that is the little bone at the end of the coccyx. I have no idea how to pronounce this word of the human body, which will be recreated in the resurrection. So the 
coccyx. I have no idea how to say this. It's known as the tailbone. Okay, so apparently Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will um, resurrect us from the tailbone um, as the origin. Okay, so that's very interesting. الذي جعل لكم من الشجر الأخضر نارا فإذا أنتم منه توقدون. It is he who made from you, made for you the green from the green tree fire, and then from it you ignite. So it is Allah Subhanahu wa Taala who creates the trees for you. Subhanallah. There is nothing in this world that is like a beautiful tree, right? It gives oxygen, it gives you fruits, it gives you shade, it gives you, and then when it dies, when the tree dies, you can literally use it as fuel for fire. So subhanAllah, even fire is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? The fact that we know how to use fire and create and, and produce it and use it for our advantage, subhanAllah, just imagine that. Imagine if we didn't have fire in this world, how would we keep ourselves warm? You know, do we need to uh, like just rely on the sun or what? And subhanAllah, even electricity is the same, right? So how many daily blessings do we need to be grateful for? Yes, my dear brothers and sisters, how many daily daily blessings that we take granted every single day, even though if if we did not have that blessing, then we feel the loss of it after it's gone, right? So, subhanAllah, I think even Wi-Fi connection is also a blessing, especially because you're using it to listen to this tafsir class. Alhamdulillah. Comment down below if you believe that Wi-Fi is a blessing from Allah, um, if you use it in the correct way. <laughs> so yes comment down below if you believe that and of course you're using it in the right way because you're here on this live class and you're listening to the words uh, of um, the Quran and the Prophet so inshallah you know you can use that in the good way but yeah subhanallah what other blessings do can we be grateful for you know I think about it in this isolation you know even going outside is a blessing subhanallah going outside and and just breathing the fresh fresh air it's a blessing um you know our friends and family are blessings as well you know now we can't see them in lockdown you know um, what else like traveling <laughs> just so many things that this pandemic has made us realize that we have to be grateful for right so inshallah let us be grateful for everything last two verses last few verses so Verse 71, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator. So, أَوَلَيْسَ الَّذِي خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ بِقَادِرٍ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَخْلُقَ مِثْلَهُمْ بَلَىٰ وَهُوَ الْخَلَّاقُ الْعَلِيمُ It is, is not he who created the heavens and the earth able to create the likes of them? Yes, it is so, and he is the knowing creator. So the one who created the heavens and the earth, um, and, you know, it's can absolutely recreate a human being that has already been created before in theory like you know in theory our creation is more understandable yes um everything is easy for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whether allah ta'ala creates us the first time or the millionth time but for us we can understand that if allah created us the first time then of course he can create us the second time it makes sense you know so that's the and if Allah can create the heavens and the earth and the solar system and this whole universe, then He can create one human being. Verse 72. He his command is only when he intends a thing that he says to it, be and it is. SubhanAllah. So I want to have a discussion around this. I'm going to read some of your replies. Um, I want to have a discussion around this. What are the wisdoms behind this ayah? When when we hear that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he says, kun, it is. Whatever he wants, whatever Allah ta'ala wants, if he wants something, he just says, be, and it becomes. It just comes into reality. You know? How should we feel when we hear this ayah? And how can we bring kun fayakun into our lives? So, um, I want you to type in the comment box below, and I'm going to read some of your replies. So, let's see what you have written. So, yes, the... Um, oh, yes, you're right. This is a typo. Sorry. This is verse 82. 
this is this 81. Yeah, so how should we feel when we when we hear Fkun Fayakun? Yes, absolutely. The might of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, yes, he has the power for anything to become. Uh, hearing this ayah embodies how powerful and mighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. Yes, absolutely, Farhana and Jasmine here as well. MashaAllah. Um, he is the only creator. Yes, Afshan, Lubna, the power of Allah, Nadia, by his will. Fawzia, how humble we should be. Absolutely, absolutely. SubhanAllah. Jazakumullah khair. Memories should feel blessed and can get this through shukr. There is no impossible to Allah. Yes, this is the one that I was looking for. Rest assured, Allah wants only what is good for us. Jazakumullah khair for this, um, for this one. This is exactly what I was... Yes, Hafsa Hanif, Allah has control over everything. Absolutely. So subhanAllah, um, when... When you hear this ayah, you feel the, the might of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the, the ultimate power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fact that everything is under the control of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you want something corrected in your life, if you want something in your life, just make your relationship with Allah good. Yeah? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who does everything. So if you have a good relationship with Allah, then subhanAllah, Allah will make everything easy for you right and it really gives you this sense of hope this sense of inspiration this sense of oh subhanallah like you know what anything is possible anything is possible i only need to make my relationship with allah um strong i need to become the wadi of allah i need to become the friend of allah i need to be in the obedience obedience of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make everything easy for me, you know? So, uh, subhanAllah, it's just that simple. I mean, it's not simple, but the formula is simple, right? Um, yeah, subhanAllah. So that's, and how can we bring it into our lives? By believing in the miracles of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can do anything. So it just gives you hope, right? It really does give you hope. And that's how we should be. We should have hope and we should have fear. So this is the this is another beautiful hadith that I want to end this beautiful tafsir lesson with. And it is one of my favorite hadiths. So let's go ahead and read it. So it was narrated from Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu that the Prophet said, Allah the blessed and exalted says, O my slaves, all of you are sinners except those whom I have saved. So ask me for forgiveness. I will forgive you. Whoever among you knows that I have the power to forgive and asks me to forgive by my power, I will forgive him. All of you are astray, except those whom I guide. Ask me for guidance and I will guide you. All of you are poor, except those whom I enrich. Ask of me and I will grant you provision. SubhanAllah. Even if you're living and you're dead and you're first and you're last and you're fresh and you're dry, Meaning, you know, the old and the young and the etc. etc. were all as pious as the most pious among my slaves that would not increase my dominion as much as a gnat's wing. And if you were to be as evil as the most evil among my slaves that would not detract from my dominion as much as a gnat's wing. Even if you're living and you're dead and you're first and you're last, you're fresh and you're dry, were to join together and each of them were to ask for all he wishes for. That would only detract from my dominion as much as if one of you were to pass by the edge of the sea and dip a needle in it and withdraw it. That is because I am the most generous, majestic. I give a word. When I say, when I rule something, all I do is say to it, be, and it is. Subhanallah. Subhanallah, subhanallah. Everybody type subhanallah. Ah. Oh. I think we need to read this hadith, you know, every single day, just to sort of, you know, make you really understand the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the fact that, you know, there's so many things, so many things I can talk about this beautiful hadith. One of my favorite hadiths. And it just makes you feel like, oh, I'm. Allah is my Rabb, 
Allah is my Rabb. The only thing I need to do is go back to Allah. That's the only thing I need to do, right? So yeah. SubhanAllah. Verse 83, final verse. فَسُبْحَانَ الَّذِي بِيَدِهِ مَلَكُوتُ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ وَإِلَيْهِ تُرْجَعُونَ So exalted is he in whose hand. SubhanAllah. Oh, you guys said SubhanAllah right now, right? MashaAllah. So, so exalted is he in whose hand is the realm of all things. مَلَكُوتُ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ The realm of all things. And to him you will be returned. So Malakut, it sounds very similar to Mulk. Okay. Mulk and Malakut, they come from the same root letter. And it means dominion or realm. But some people, they say Mulk, it means the physical realm. And Malakut, it means the spiritual realm. But uh, Malakut, it can mean both of them, basically. And I have something very exciting to say about Mulk or Surah Mulk. And we're going to be talking about it later on. But yes, subhanAllah. So we are at the end of our tafsir class for today. What did we learn from this lesson? The creation of Allah, the mindset of a Muslim, the origin of the human being, the resurrection of humankind. We talked about kun fayakun and the fact that we will all return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let us make our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala better. Subhanallah, my dear uh, sisters and brothers. So I would like you to just, you know, comment. Let's just comment uh in the comment section uh what are some main things that you have learned from this lesson from uh these tafsir classes inshallah um please do share these classes with your family and friends on social media as well uh they will be up on youtube as well just go to good tree arabic academy and you will find them there so alhamdulillah 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 we have come to the end of our tafsir class uh of surah yaseen Subhanallah, I put a lot of effort into making these classes and I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept these. And I know that you have put a lot of effort into coming to these classes every single day. And um, I hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept your dedication and your time um, to attending these classes and your sincerity in doing so. Uh, so inshallah, let's raise our hands and let's just make a small dua uh, right now. So, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Malik Yawm Al-Din. Iyaka Na'budu wa Iyaka Nasta'een. Ihdina Sirat Al-Mustaqeem. Ihdina Sirat Al-Mustaqeem. Ihdina Sirat Al-Mustaqeem. Sirat Al-Ladheena An'amta Alayhim. Yawayri Al-Maghdubi Alayhim. Al-Ladhaalim. Ameen. ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار يا الله let us practice يا الله please accept from us this small good deed that we have done for you يا الله of the tafsir of Surah Yaseen, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, let us absorb the knowledge that we have gained from these classes, Ya Allah. Let it sink within us and let it purify our hearts and our minds. And Ya Allah, let us show you the fruits of this knowledge by bringing it into action and practicing it in our daily lives. Ya Allah, let us feel your mercy let us feel your power and your might and your wisdom in every single minute of the day of every single second of our lives ya allah and let us always rely upon you as you are the one who just says kun fayakun you are the one who says be and it is ya allah you are the one who can who bought this coronavirus <laughs> as a test for all of us. And Ya Allah, you are the one who can take it away because you are the one who says, kun Ya Allah, you are the one who causes natural disasters to happen in the world. And you are the one who saves everybody. Ya Allah, so save us. Ya Allah, you are the one who are testing the Muslim lands and the Muslim people with the oppression of the disbelievers. Ya Allah, Defeat the disbelievers and give success to the believers in every single land of this world. Ya Rabbul Alameen.
Ya Allah, let us do the best that we can to help our Muslim mothers and sisters around the world as well. And Ya Allah, let us use this knowledge that we have gained to become better people so that we can serve humanity for your sake, Ya Rabbul Alameen, so that we can go back to you, Ya Allah, with you being pleased with us and us being pleased with you, Ya Rabbul Alameen. Ya Allah, let us be of the people that you said in Surah Yasin that they will be in Jannat. They will be in Jannat. Uh, that they will be in amusement, in joyful amusement. SubhanAllah. Ya Rabbul Alameen, ya, ya Allah, make us of the people of Jannah, just as you have mentioned from Surah Yasin. And Ya Allah, protect us from the people of Jahannam, as you have mentioned in Surah Yasin. Ya Allah. And Ya Allah, on the day that you resurrect us and you blow the horn, Ya Allah, let us be close to you. Let us be under the shade of your arsh, Ya Rabbul Alameen. And Ya Allah, let us die as Muslims and our children and our families and let us continue to seek knowledge until the day we die. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun. Wassalamun ala musaleen. Walhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Ameen, 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 ameen. Everybody type ameen. Okay. Ameen, ya rabbil alameen. Okay. So jazakumullah khair, everybody. We're not done yet. I have a few more announcements to make. So, everybody, can you guess what the next surah we will do tafsir on will be? So, I promised that I will do tafsir classes until the end of August. So, we're going to do another surah. So, can you guess what surah that's going to be? Yes. So, everybody has basically guessed it already. So... What surah do you think it's going to be? It is going to be Suratul Mulk. Okay, Surah Mulk, inshallah. So, we are going to be doing the Fseer of Surah Mulk. We're going to start on the 24th of August until the end of August. So, maybe around five days. Okay. It's going to be a five day uh, classes. Okay. And it's going to be at the same time as these classes. Uh, because next week, inshallah, we're going to be doing the five-day Arabic course. Okay, so that's going to go on for one hour. Okay, these are the timings. On the 17th of August, from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m., we'll do the five-day Arabic course. And then Saturday, Sunday, we'll have a break. And then on Monday, 24th of August, we will continue again. So, you know, inshallah, please, 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 if you enjoyed this uh, tafsir class of Surah Yasin, then subhanAllah, you will love Surah Mulk, inshallah. You know that I put a lot of effort into making these slides and stuff and, you know, doing these classes. And the only thing I want from you is to make dua for me, of course, but share, share it with the people that you know and you love and the ones who will um, benefit from this inshallah just just share it please you know it's it's free it's free people <laughs> it's free rewards that you're going to get inshallah okay so uh another thing is that i'm doing a new course it is uh, the 40 hadith of imam nawawi rahimahullah it's an eight week hadith course and this is a paid course it's very cheap it's only like a hundred dollars okay so if you want to do the 40 hadith course with me then subhanAllah, this will be even more amazing because the 40 hadith of Imam Nawawi, rahimahullah, they are the most amazing hadiths or they are the foundations of Islam, okay? And we're going to be going in depth and it's going to be in English. So, uh, and also another thing about this 40 hadith of Imam Nawawi, rahimahullah, uh, if I just go over here, I'll just show you exactly what you're going to get for the eight week hadith course. So you can just go to the link that I posted over here. Oh, sorry. I'm just showing you everything, <laughs> showing you my whole website and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, you know, subhanAllah, what you will get is you will get, we'll do, it's going to be eight weeks of interactive live classes. You're going to get the slides. There's going to be a mini quiz for each lesson. And also, the most important thing is that you are going to get a hadith certificate and verified chain of narration all the way up to the Prophet ﷺ. So, subhanAllah, you will have a connection with the Prophet ﷺ in terms of you will have a chain of narration. 
So all you have to do is attend the classes and you'll have a chain of narration all the way up to the Prophet ﷺ. And of course, we're going to be going through uh, these hadiths in depth. So inshallah, that course is only $97, $97 USD. Okay, so inshallah, you can go ahead and sign up for that course. It's very affordable, okay? And it's eight week course and you're going to get a certificate at the end, <laughs> you know? So inshallah, uh, I hope that it's worth it. But yeah, inshallah. So at the end, Jazakumullah khair, everyone. Um, inshallah, I will see you, not tomorrow, but I will see you the day after tomorrow on Monday for our uh, Arabic course, inshallah. So I'm so, so excited. May Allah Ta'ala um, accept all of our efforts in doing this course and in seeking knowledge and teaching knowledge. Whatever you learn, go ahead and propagate it to other people, inshallah, and tell your friends and your family, your children, uh, about what you have learned. That is the main thing, inshallah. Okay. Jazakumullah khair, everyone. May Allah Ta'ala bless you. I will see you on Monday for the Arabic course, inshallah. So, um, this is the link for the Hadith course. I will post it on my Instagram and Facebook. And if you need it need it from me personally then just uh, email me or dm me and i'll send it to you inshallah okay everybody assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu